Hey everyone, let's talk LinkedIn algorithms. I wanted to chat with you a little bit about the research I've done and why LinkedIn algorithms really matter. I wrote a 25 page ebook that I'm actually going to give everyone so that you can see all of the details, how to improve your SSI, why you care about it. The LinkedIn algorithms were designed with one thought in mind, people you know, talking about things you care about. They were designed with the, the content creator in mind as opposed to other platforms that are designed with the reader in mind. So the theory is that Richard Branson with his 17 million followers or Bill Gates with 28 million followers doesn't really care whether they get one more engagement or not. But you, somebody who is the everyday person who doesn't have millions of followers will care about each and every step of engagement. Every time you get engagement, it keeps you coming back. So that's kind of the premise behind what that LinkedIn algorithm does. We know that more than 675 million users are on LinkedIn and 20 million companies also use LinkedIn. We know that 88 to 90% of recruiters utilize LinkedIn as a sourcing tool. So we, um, we look at other stats like LinkedIn is 277% more effective for lead generation than Facebook and Twitter. We know 70 to 86% of companies use LinkedIn to find and screen candidates. These are powerful numbers that say LinkedIn's right here at your disposal, a free resource that you can use to land your next job. I don't teach LinkedIn strategies to make you the next influencer. That's not what we do. But what I do want is to make you an expert in your industry so that when hiring managers come and find you on LinkedIn, it sets you apart that we have built a digital brand for you that supports your resume. There are a couple of things that we looked at yesterday, like the SSI, and we talked a little bit in yesterday's video about wanting to be in that most likely to engage category. Okay, so knowing that LinkedIn is this powerful tool, let's really dive in to that social selling index, establishing your professional brand, finding the right people, engaging with insight and building relationships. And then let's talk about how we're going to use that to find a job. The social selling technique, the sales strategy there is that we find a solution to problems, okay? We know that 86% of the time, somebody will buy from somebody who has provided a solution. The first person to provide a solution to a business problem usually wins the bid. That is not different in a job search. So where sales and job hunting are very similar is you have to be solutions driven and the first person in the door to come up with a plan that solves the business problems that the company is experiencing. Companies hire solutions. So establishing your brand as a, as a problem solver, as a solutions oriented person, comes from really having those key components in your resume, top to bottom. When I look at your resume, do I understand what problems you solve? Some of this can happen in a tagline, in your banner, having a professional picture. It all works together in the content you create and the things you talk about really should support who you are as a problem solver. So in your tagline, I like to include something like, I help companies and what do you help companies with? For me, I help job seekers navigate the digital hiring process, right? Very, very simple. You can even add in a using, you know, these tools, but using these strategies, but we really want to focus on what problems do you solve for companies? So the four pillars of your SSI, establishing your professional brand, finding the right people, engaging with insight, and building relationships are all ranked equally. So they each make up 25 points for your total score of up to 100. An average score is 70 or above. Really after you get to about 65, it becomes harder and harder to get your score to notch up. But getting engaged, get, building a brand, finding the right people, using different searching techniques. And again, this is where I differ from some people. I'm not as worried about your total score, even though I'm going to teach you how to really increase that. I'm not as worried about that as I am getting you in front of the right people and having the right people reach out to you to navigate your job search, having the right recruiters reach out to you, telling you about opportunities and asking you to apply for their company or send a resume 
we really want you to be kind of hunted in your job category. My goal is always to drive traffic to you. I want you to be at the top of the most elite tier in recruiter searches. In my own business, when I took my social selling index from 60 to 76, which right now I think it hovers around 75, I started receiving daily requests for resumes and job search coaching services. I saw it personally in my business that when I fixed my SSI, when I became a more active, engaged presence on LinkedIn, I was then rewarded by being at the top of searches when people were looking for resume writers and career coaches. Being ranked at the top 2% of all talent acquisition professionals and the top 1% of my network of over 11,000 people was a huge bump in my business that while people didn't know that, when you look at my profile, you can tell I have 11,000 connections. You can't tell where I'm ranked among those connections, but the algorithm knows, and it does rank me in search results based on that information. Establishing your brand is all about what do you want people to think of when they see you? You know who people are based on what you see. So you're establishing this professional brand that really says, this is who I am. This is what I represent. If I were looking for an HR business partner, I know that HR and business partner also benefits, employee relations or ER. I can build this search strand around keywords that happen commonly. So if I were a job seeker looking for an HR business partner role, one thing I would do is start to notate the keywords I see over and over and over in job descriptions and make sure those appear on my LinkedIn profile as well as my resume. Remember that fields that you enter text into are searchable on LinkedIn. So when somebody is doing a search, the skills you enter, the content you enter, then that really is searchable terms. So you want that to really mirror your resume. I know before I get a lot of comments on this, I know a lot of people disagree with me and that's okay because I'm not just about building you as an influencer. I'm building you as a job seeker. If you're using your LinkedIn profile to mirror your resume, why would we not provide the same content in your LinkedIn profile that we do on your resume to grab the attention of potential hiring managers and recruiters? So I am a fan of your about section being a first person account of your resume, as well as um, making sure that it just includes those same keywords. So if you want to make it more personal, if you want to make it more um, captivating and fun, absolutely do that. Make sure the keywords are there though. Okay. Okay. Make sure that you're showing open for new opportunity. Here's something important to remember. If you've chosen to only show recruiters that you are available for a new opportunity. That only applies for recruiters who have LinkedIn Recruiter. So if they're an independent recruiter who doesn't pay for the upgraded service, they wouldn't know you're open for new opportunities. They wouldn't have that same search capability. So that's totally up to you on whether you want to announce it to the public or you wanna keep it private, but just remember that it only applies for recruiters who have the LinkedIn Recruiter service. We really want you in that most likely to respond category that would indicate that you're open for work and that you're likely to engage if somebody sends you an in-mail, which also means you need a history of engaging with in-mail. If somebody sends you a message that you don't want, decline it. Even if your answer is no thank you, go ahead and give an answer. One of your goals should be to get to all-star status on your profile. That simply means that all of the available fields are filled out completely. You have a current job. You have um, a job title, you have a picture and a banner and work history and skills. Hopefully you have recommendations. That all equals that you have all-star status, which means you're going to show up in more searches, okay? I think it's 27 times more searches that you should appear in. We want to get you in the triple digit search results. So monitor your dashboard, make sure that your search results are actually climbing and that that tells you you're engaging the right people as well as have the right keywords in your profile. You need a professional photo, a completed headline and tagline, completed about section, current position and previous work history, skills and expertise, education and connections. Now, I have seen on my last couple of clients that LinkedIn may have fixed where you don't have to have a current position to have all-star status. You just have to have a good work history. So if you find that you can't get to all-star status, check and see if you have a current position. You can make that current position like currently seeking an HR position or whatever you're looking for. And then under the company name, you can do hashtag ONO, 
which is open for new opportunities, or you could even use Maximize Your Job Search. Make sure you have a professional picture. So um, it should be a, a headshot. It does not necessarily have to be professionally taken. It just needs to be professional. Be aware of hair and makeup for our ladies. Watch necklines. Uh, don't have animals or kids or spouses in the picture. If you wouldn't take them to an interview, don't include them on your profile picture. Have a banner that really represents what you do. We talked about this yesterday. Saw some great banners uh, come across, so loved that. I also like to include my I help statement. So I help who you help with what problem. And then you can even include by how you solve it. For example, like I help job seekers navigate the digital hiring process, as I mentioned earlier. In your about section, for me, I like this to mirror the resume. So I use the summary and core competencies that we include in the resume. In the work history, um, I believe that should mirror what you have on your resumes and definitely check your dates, check your timelines. If you include it on LinkedIn, it needs to appear on your resume. If you have two separate uh, pieces of information, regardless of your reason why, it creates doubt, which inevitably will cost you opportunities. Make sure that you have skills and expertise and get people to endorse you for those. Include your education. And if you don't have a degree, you can still do the same thing that I recommend on a resume, which would be coursework towards and then the degree name. Okay, on your connections, I encourage all of my clients to get in the habit of connecting with people as you interact with them professionally. So past employers, colleagues, people you meet while volunteering or networking, or even just acquaintances, neighbors, however you wanna do that, increase your network and that will increase the visibility of people who can see you. My favorite quote from T.D. Jakes is, it may not be the thing, it may be the thing that leads to the thing. Okay, your LinkedIn banner needs to be 1584 by 396. If you go with the free version of Canva, which I recommend, then know that you can't change the sizing. So everything on the bottom part of your banner or the top part of your banner, depending on how you size it, will get cut off. So just remember that as you're sizing out your banner and don't include really important information down at the bottom or at the very top if you're gonna cut those pieces off, but know that it doesn't fit exactly in there, okay? Make sure to get in, get in the habit of giving recommendations. If you work with a coach or an expert who does a great job, go out and recommend them. If you work with, um, if you're networking with somebody who is just outstanding, go give them a recommendation. Then don't be afraid also to ask for recommendations in return, but it's a great way to build people up, be an active, engaged member of the community. When I'm going and looking at hiring people, I wanna know how do you talk to and about people? I go and look at how people give recommendations, not just the recommendations that they have received. I like the future content section. I think it's a great way to establish yourself as an expert to share industry relevant information that will engage people. And also when they go to your profile, they'll see exactly what you like to share about and establish yourself as someone who's in the know of things that are currently happening in your industry. Connecting with the right people comes not only from who you connect with, but how you connect with them. So get in the habit of searching for people before just clicking that connect button and including a message when you connect with them. Of, hey, this is so-and-so. I saw your profile. I, we have some mutual connections. would love to connect with you, however you want to phrase that, okay? Using advanced strategies like um, the Boolean searches to find people so you can go out and do like Toyota Recruiter or Coca-Cola recruiter and search for people and find them that way as well. Just remember to go to their profile before connecting with them. Don't connect with them from the search results page. As far as best practices go, LinkedIn flags post with um, the hashtags follow, connect, comment, or hashtag like. So any of those hashtags, hashtag follow, hashtag connect, hashtag comment, or hashtag like, those all trigger the spam filter. So these are a few rules of engagement to keep in mind when looking to make new connections. Don't just randomly spam people, okay? LinkedIn spam filters go on high alert when you tag more than six people in a post. And also users can report you for sending unwelcome connection requests. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, LinkedIn takes it seriously. Search for connections also to expand your network that have the word lion on, in them, which is a LinkedIn open network. It means they are likely to engage with you and accept a request from you, okay? 
Engaging with insight remains our most important piece. This is where I recommend you post at least once a day. You can post more than once a day, but they need to be at least three hours apart. There is a screening process. So when we go through the LinkedIn algorithms, here's how it works. So when you first make a post on LinkedIn, there's a spam filter that immediately scans the information that you've posted to see, is it spam, low quality, or high quality? If it deems it as high quality information, it sends it out to a target group of your connections, people who are most likely to engage. Remember that the LinkedIn algorithm was designed to keep people engaged on the LinkedIn platform. So if it sees an external link, it might not rank that as high or it doesn't rank that as high as if you have an internal link that keeps people on the LinkedIn platform. So once that is scanned, it goes out to your target audience and that is called the golden hour, the hour in which people have to respond. So you want to be actively engaged, tag people in comments. If somebody comments, you want to reply. This is the golden hour. They say that if it performs well within the first hour, it will perform well over the next 24 hours. And then after that, if it does well during the golden hour, then it goes to a LinkedIn editor. This is a human sitting at a desk who then reviews the content, decides is it low quality or high quality, and then it makes a decision with a click of a button to either move it up in the algorithm or down in the algorithm based on how they perceive that information. So if it seems to be high quality information, they can actually make it a trending topic. They can put it out to a larger audience beyond just your network. They can make it the first thing people see. There are a lot of different factors here, okay? So it goes through the spam filter and then through the LinkedIn editors. A couple of things the spam filters and the editors are looking for, use of good grammar, don't use external links. If you have an external link, put it in the comments below your post. Also, don't post multiple links and don't tag more than five or six people. That's a big one. Strategic tagging is really critical. You can tag people in comments, just not more than you know four or five at a time. Don't do these long things where you tag a bunch of people. It can trigger spam as well. And then don't post more than every three hours. That's another critical component. Many experts say not to post more than 20 times per month. Um, I have not seen that play out. I have seen how posting multiple times per day can trigger a negative response and it removing posts from the algorithm altogether. If your post gets removed from the algorithm altogether because it's deemed spam, low quality, or because you're posting too frequently, it's not like LinkedIn jail. It just means that somebody would have to go to your profile to find that information. It won't show up in the feeds. Best times to post in a day, 7.45 a.m., 10.45 a.m., 12.45 p.m., and 4.45 p.m. They say that that's Eastern time. That actually comes from Hootsuite. I have seen that play out as being whatever it is in your local time zone would be fine. It is widely accepted that the noon hour is the highest traffic time on LinkedIn and that posts between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. will experience the greatest chance for engagement during the golden hour period. So the golden hour starts as soon as you click post on LinkedIn and runs for the 60 minutes following the post. Engagement during the golden hour is crucial to the success of the post. The most important role is don't post and ghost. Don't just post something and quickly leave LinkedIn and then everybody's kind of on their own. Read it if you want to. Don't read it if you don't. This is the time for you to jump in and engage with people. Add a comment to your post that provides a link to your website or portfolio. Tag somebody in a comment that you think should really see that post or would be most likely to engage. Remember when tagging people, like if I tag Paula, and she then turns around and engages with the post, that validates the tag. But if she doesn't engage, then it may trigger a spam filter if it happens very often. So if she doesn't engage, the spam filter is triggered and then it can remove my post from the algorithm. So post at critical peak times, the 745, 1045, 1245, and 445 window. Think about it in terms of right before work, lunch hour, and then right at the end of the day. Ask questions that spark engagement at the end of your post. Follow a consistent but not rigid posting schedule so followers want to check and see what content you're creating. Respond to anyone who engages. Make it a habit to go back and check your post. Have a mix of different types of media. So sometimes you can include a picture or a quote. Sometimes you can have a video. Video is a great way for your personality to show. I recommend video if you have a super engaging personality, if you're comfortable, if you have excellent communication skills, it's a great tool for you to get in front of hiring managers and really show what you're all about and let your passion shine. 
If you're not ready for video, you can still post. Text only post actually get the most engagement. And that a lot that has mostly to do with the LinkedIn algorithms. They actually promote text only content as well as as content viewers, we often scroll through our phone and like things or comment on things. And when it's text only, we are more likely to engage. Videos don't always translate well on our phones. Strategically tag people when you feel they will engage with your post. Remember that if they choose not to engage, then it can impact how your post performs in the algorithm. Don't go back and edit your post. It will weaken the reach. Now, I am famous for missing something, especially if I'm posting from my phone, so that I have to go back and edit because I would rather lose the engagement than have something with typos. Dolores is famous for catching these, by the way. She's great at that. I should have her review everything before I post it. I just don't have time. Make a habit. So in building relationships, you want to make a habit of connecting with people and then engaging with them pretty immediately. So send them a simple message can go a long way that just says, Thanks for connecting. I look forward to networking with you. Use text plays to kind of streamline that process and get in the habit of having great conversations with the people in your network. If you haven't talked to people in a little while, then circle back with them and uh, just, you know, touch base. Hey, I haven't seen you post in a while or I've been following you and I think you're doing great. Anything like that will count as engagement in building your relationships and having a great LinkedIn brand. So I hope this helps. We will talk more in a little while. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.